One of them is our guest tonight, a consultant psychiatrist and clinical psychologist who has, been, has found himself locked down uh, in the Lupeju area of Lagos, and therefore he joins us via the phone, Dr. Peter Ogunobi. Thank you so much uh, for your time. Welcome uh, to our program this evening. Thank you so much for having me. Let me begin, before we get to our topic for the day, let me begin by how did this uh, latest directive meet you, uh, that no further movement, even for essential service workers, once the coffee is in effect? Well, I, I, I've never seen such a thing before in my life. I'm visibly shaking as I'm talking to you now in my car. I finished my clinic and attended to the patient. And I also see another patient in another hospital, a patient in critical care that needed my help. And I was accosted on the road. I met roadblocks. And of course, as usual, I identified myself. I showed my ID card. They saw a lot of things in my car to prove that, yes, this person is not just lying. But what I was told is, I mean, the officers came. One was telling me, what were you doing till 8 o'clock? Another one said, if I, let me just tell you the truth. If you love yourself, stay at home with your family. We have been giving directives. Total lockdown, including essential health workers. I said, I have an emergency to attend to. They said, the speaking grammar. Let me tell you, go to this route, go to this route, get this one, go home. I said, this is your future. I'm going just, I was told. And for more than one hour, I have been finding myself roaming from one street to the other, trying to find my route. I kept meeting different roadblocks, and nobody was allowed. I met other essential workers who told me the same price. Along the Kodogu Road, along Savo Commercial Avenue, Montala Mohammed Avenue, everywhere blocked. And I don't I, I know what is going on. I don't understand. Well, uh, at, at, at this point, maybe the question to ask is that, or the, the way to look at this is that the federal government had insisted that it was going to move to the face of enforcement since people were not seen to be complying. Now, the, the question I would have asked you if you were here, being a psychiatrist and psych, uh, psychologist, is what makes people, uh, in terms of behavior, resistant to rules? I mean, that would now lead to the kind of situation where others are affected by their non-compliance. Well, yeah, it is. I mean, as a behavioral scientist, I understand that sometimes uh, the natural instinct of every man psychologically is to go towards deviance. And that is why there are rules, there are laws, and there are orders. Remove rules and laws. Every one the best of the Western world will be chaotic. Everything you have a state of acrimony. People will naturally do things based on their selfish and their personal uh, personal interest. And that is why we have laws and rules. It also goes to talk about the Maslow hierarchy of need. That the basic instinct of survivor. Is the I is the lowest before you talk about needs, and these two are very key to mankind. The first level you talk about flight or fight, the biological needs and everything. So these two needs are what drive man or mankind to do things, and a man will rather do anything against the law to satisfy is selfish desire. And that is why you need rules and others to make sure that you clamp down on some of these things. But it's quite unfortunate the way it is being done now. Well, uh, would, you, would you be in a position to make an appeal? Because now we're talking about essential service workers who will be needed for the situation that has led to what we're talking about, including people like yourself, uh, and others, uh, such as journalists and f other frontline health workers. What would you want the government to do now? Because they've moved to the face of enforcement, and it appears as if it has created a different kind of uh, problem, if you like. 
Now, anywhere in the world, even where you have total lockdown, it has never been heard of in history that during total lockdown in any society that you prevent frontline workers, medical officers, nurses, pharmacies, because others will die. As you said, COVID, I mean, this is become, becoming something else. You are preventing death from COVID, you are preventing transmission, but there are people that are dying of other ailments. People have typhoid, people have malaria, people have hypertension, people have diabetes, people have septicemia, people have different ailments that we still need to attend to. I think a balanced approach is needed here. You do not stop essential workers, you do not stop security outfits, you do not stop people. I mean, I'm, I saw lots of Lima trucks all stopped. So what do we have? We're going to have waste which will not be removed. A lot of this was harassed in front of me. Even when the man was shouting that I am allowed to move, and they said, no, it's a total lockdown. The truth is, an average health worker wants to also stay at home. An average health worker wants to stay with his family or her family. But the call of duty makes us to say, no, we just have to go out. And if you are clapping down everything totally, I don't see any reason I'm sorry to in that. So a balanced approach. Show your eyes that those who are trying to lie or trying to say, oh, they are giving that, that, they can be easily fished out. It is that simple. It is that, and that is how it is done anywhere in the world. Art should not be different. 